Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at a charming and interesting mount. Uh, this was copied, basically, it's a semi-replica of a Goto mount from the 1930s or 40s, Goto Kogaku. Uh, and that mount is very similar to what's called a Crawford mount, uh, which was invented by uh, Lord Crawford back in the 1800s or so. Anyway, um, the basic idea is to turn an Altaz telescope into an equatorial tracking telescope. It's got some limitations, but it works pretty well for that function uh, with, uh, with those considerable limitations. It's very good for lunar and planetary things, things are, that are on the ecliptic. Uh, and if you're at a mid-northern or mid-southern uh, latitude yourself, the mount will work just fine for that kind of thing. <clears throat> it doesn't work for northern objects. It, it won't track equatorially for northern objects and things real high or real low. But it's perfect for things like uh, the planets um, or the moon, things like that on the, uh, near, the, near the ecliptic. Um, so here's how it looks in operation. I'm just moving it by hand. And you can see that it's got a very kind of a strange uh, operation. Uh, those of you who are sharp will have noticed there's field rotation here. So this is not a true equatorial mount. It's tracking equatorially, but the field is rotating. So you couldn't do photography with this without some sort of a field rotation deal on there. Um, but it works quite well. And I'll go over the details of exactly how this works. Let me just show you that. Of course, this works uh, pretty nicely for a Newtonian. Very hard to make this work for a uh, refractor. Um, the reason it works for a Newtonian is because you're up here at the eyepiece and you've got access to all the controls. This little thing, uh, I don't know what to call that, maybe altitude or pseudo declination. It acts sort of like a declination motion. And that thing's right here at hand when you're using a Newtonian. If you were back here using a refractor, it wouldn't work very well at all. So anyway, here I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of the uh, Goto style uh, mounts that he made back in the 30s and 40s. And now you can see uh, my imitation of his style of mount, uh, the Crawford style of mount. And I'll go over the operation a little bit more in a little bit more detail. Let me just show you, at a, suppose you have a higher object, that's your motion, something like that. Suppose you have something, notice this is fixed here. Once you lock this down, it doesn't change length unless you need a little bit of tracking, a pseudo declination right there. So that's how that works. And it works quite well. And I'll show you some more uh, interesting things. Here it is using it. If you, one of the things that Goto did was put a drive up here for the um, azimuth or pseudo right ascension. Anyway, the azimuth has a slow motion here, and that slow motion forces the telescope to move in azimuth, which then in, in, in turn is forced to follow an equatorial motion by this rod here, by the Crawford. I'll call it the Crawford strut for lack of a a better term. This Crawford strut does the work of keeping it equatorial. Let me show you some of the basic features of this mount. First of all, I've loosened this up a little bit so I can give you a profile. Uh, now this is set right here. That should be aimed, there's an imaginary line through there, that's the polar axis. That should be aimed at Polaris, or the North Celestial Pole at least. And um, Depending upon where you are, you might have to adjust that. So 
I've got this set for my latitude, which is about 40 degrees. If I wanted to move to a different latitude, I would have to rearrange this thing a little bit, maybe even use some extension bolts and so forth. In the original GoTo mounts, they had it set up so that you could uh, adjust this, and they had a pretty long bolt on here. Anyway, you can adjust this, etc. And you can see that you might have to put extension bolts on there and so forth. But uh, this will work for most mid-range northern latitudes. Uh, maybe, oh, 20 degrees on up to 70, 80 degrees. I, I, well, 80 degrees is probably pushing it. Um, maybe 60, 70 degrees, something like that. So anyway, now I've got it set. Let's assume I've got it set for precisely 40 degrees. And I've got it all, uh, just like any other uh, polar alignment process, you might want to take some care with that. But for visual use, it's not going to make much difference as long as that's close. <clears throat> now, I've got it aimed, theoretically, well, this has to aim, this axis has to aim directly south. So this points to the North Celestial Pole. So depending on where I am, and I've just got this, I've, I've just loosened the mount so I can show you that. So depending on where you are, you would set it for the appropriate latitude and the appropriate settings, like so. <coughs> now, let's assume that that's due south and that's due north. This thing is now set up to operate. And this thing, this is a sliding, I'll, I'll show you some close-ups. This is, a, I believe technically this is a knuckle joint. And this slides through there. Once you find your object, say we've got something that's directly on the meridian, and uh, it's at, say, that altitude on the meridian, you lock this down. So once you've got this locked down, that length is not going to change as this thing moves around. You've got everything else locked down. Everything should be good. So now it's ready to begin its uh, equatorial tracking. And it would look something like this as it moves. This is not sliding, notice. This is moving. There's a, another knuckle joint up here. And these have to be set in a particular way so that they don't rotate. I mean, you're not transmitting rotational motion here. At least not directly. So what you're doing here is you're tracking. I'm going to show you another, another angle here. You can see now what it's doing is something like that. Now, suppose you've got something that it's a different uh, that's at a different latitude. I'm going to loosen this uh, da, 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 a different different altitude, different declination. Suppose it's just you know the ecliptic in this particular season is really low. So it's coming across like that. I do have a little scraping because it's uh, this rod gets a little bit long. When you go um, way up high like that, this thing has some limitations. It's only good for things uh, pretty close to the ecliptic. You're going pretty high there. That's kind of extreme for this thing, but say like that. So now I'm tracking like that, and I've also got this set up the way Goto had them set up, so that it's um, you can lock here, and now you can track. I don't know if you can see it. I'm sure you could probably see that, but it's moving. I'm locking this axis, so I'm moving here, and it's performing equatorial motion, if you follow what I'm saying. And this thing actually works quite well tracks. I uh, had it out and was looking at the moon the other night. I would just let it walk away from it for uh, half an hour, come back, turn this a little bit. This is not a direct linear rate here, of course, but I turn this a little bit and boom, there comes the moon. And of course, these knuckle joints need to be made with some precision to work effectively. They've got ball bearings and so forth in there. I'll show you some close-ups. Let me lock it down and show you slow motion here. By the way, there's no reason this wouldn't work in the Southern Hemisphere. At certain latitudes, if you're located at uh, 
you know, maybe 40 degrees south latitude. This will work for you for tracking things that are pretty close to the meridian. Uh, you're just moving it in the opposite direction. So this will work in the southern hemisphere. It works in the northern hemisphere. Here's a close-up of this uh, altitude slow motion or pseudo declination, kind of depending on what you want to call it. Anyway, and this is just from an old 60 millimeter telescope. I had, I adopted that for this for this purpose. Anyway, you can see that this gives you just a slight difference in the length of that rod. Now, as this moves, um, let's see, I have to unlock it a little bit to do that. As this moves, this joint here has to rotate ever so slightly. And you can probably see that on the video. So this is rotating a little bit. And i got a ball bearing in there. You want to keep that as... Uh, as stiff as possible and still allow it to rotate. Okay, like that. here's this knuckle joint. Now this length needs to be very nice and rigid and stiff so it doesn't flex up and down. You want to keep that uh, that pseudo axis just where it needs to be. Um, here is your, this is kind of a slip arrangement like so, so that that rod can go up and down and you lock it down here. These are just here so I can adjust the tension on that should I need to. Um, now, when this moves, you'll see this has got a ball bearing in here and stuff. To keep that from, you want that point to stay right there as best you possibly can. So you're keeping that point fixed, so this has to rotate as freely as possible while all that's happening. Okay, so here we have, um, this is basically an Altaz mount. Um, I don't know if you'll recognize that, but this is an old brass one. It actually came from an Alvin Clark refractor. I'm not sure if it's actually Alvin Clark, but that's what it came off of. Um, and so it's an old, just an old style brass thing I had adopted to use for this demonstration. Uh, now here, this is a this is just a worm and worm wheel. This is from an old 60 millimeter refractor. Just a cheap 60 millimeter refractor. Adapted that. It works fine for this purpose. I can lock this down. There's a lock back here. Friction is actually enough to do it, but that locks it there. Now, I can't move it so in, in azimuth now. But now it, free, it moves freely here. So it's moving like that for just for setting purposes then I have a lock you can't see back there to lock it down and now it, it locks it down to the to the worm and gear. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this interesting uh, equatorial pseudo equatorial mount um, the Crawford style mount uh, as it was developed by Goto Kogaku back in the 1940s or so. Thank you very much for watching.